Well, today I have to say it's super and daylight in terms of headline issues. Joining me now to discuss it, Sky News political editor Andrew Clannell. Um, uh, this doubling of the tax rate now for balances over th uh, over three million. I take the PM's point there on the defined benefit scheme that politicians are on. If he's got Treasury looking at that, I'd implore him to look at the public servants and all those military pensions as well, because when they retire on their 900k and uh, plus salaries, they will be picked up by this change if it is across the board. I'll get into the specifics of the policy a bit later on, but I want to talk to you about the politics. All week last week, there was Chalmers flying a kite. Well, the kite's landed today. They've used a tactic from the Howard GST fight, and I remember it well at the time. They announce a broken promise, but they, they try and ameliorate it by saying, well, we're not going to bring it in until after the next election, so you will have a say at the next election. Now, will they get away with it, Andrew, or will this be still seen as a backflip? Well, I think it's a bit different to that uh, in the sense that you didn't see the legislation before the election. This time he's bringing the legislation before the election. So that's a bit misleading because uh, the legislation could pass in this Senate and uh, Peter Dutton could win and uh, he doesn't have the Senate, so you can't overturn it. Uh, Howard sought a mandate, so it is very different. They could hold off on the legislation. But at the same time, this affects so few people whereas the GST affected every Australian. So it, it, it really is a, a different matter to that, and I think they'll probably get now, away with it, to be there, honest. Though. Just jump in there. I remember well on work choices. You didn't have to lose your job to fear you might lose your job, right? It, it impacted grandparents worried about grandkids. It worried those that were in secure jobs about those in their family that might be in casual jobs. What I would fear with this, this uh, change is that once you start affecting caps on overarching balances, it's just a matter of bringing that $3 million figure down and down and down. So once you start fiddling around and doing what you said you wouldn't do, the fear is for anyone with a super balance that somehow or other they're next. Could be, but the Coalition didn't suffer when they put in some taxes there in 2016-17. And I just don't think it's it, it carries the same weight as work choices and uh, GST, it, it, which you know, all Australia, most Australians work, but that had the potential to affect them. Not not many Australians have three million dollars in their super account. So yes, I mean, there's a couple of things the opposition can exploit, such as the trust issue, such as the broken promises issue, and they can tie it to electricity bill savings and a whole lot of other issues. We'll get an electoral test soon enough. We'll have Aston. And I don't think Chris Minns would be welcoming all this super talk in New South Wales either, Peter. It's got to be said. No doubt we'll have a news poll soon mm. as well. But what I'm saying is this is a mark of Albanese as opposed to what Chalmers might want to do. Albanese is never going to do something massively unpopular. It ain't going to happen. And that's one of Peter Dutton's concerns as he tries to bridge the gap in two years' time. Well, what about the, the risk the policy creep runs into a capital gains tax? You know, the preferential treatment of family home or negative gearing. They were all mentioned in dispatches today. We certainly have got the overall budget cost to those out there now in the public domain. How does the opposition play it? Well, they just have to... Uh, the, the opposition are waiting for economic circumstances to get worse for a chance of victory. Let's, let's be frank about it. And they need to tie the government to that. The electricity bill promise gives them that opportunity. The superannuation uh, policy, even though it hardly affects anyone uh, directly, uh, gives them an opportunity to say, you can't trust these guys, they're going to do worse things to you. And some of Jim Chalmers' rhetoric feeds that. But until they make a more major change in terms of tax, which you get the sense the Treasurer really wants to because he was Shadow Finance Minister during that time of the shortened policies. He's happy to expand that tax expenditure statement to show all these supposed taxes that Treasury thinks we should be paying. Until Albanese allows him to introduce some of those controversial measures, I just don't think they have much mm. to worry about, Peter. I mean, Jim Ch if Jim Chalmers right, was in well charge... He would probably go for it and he'd put Labor potentially in trouble. But Albanese is very cautious. Now, there will come a time 
And my come by three years, when sort of the gloss wears off Albanese, we, we see, you know, these days it happens a lot quicker than it used to happen. But right now, I still think he's sitting pretty. Well, then just quickly, I'll, I'll go into this uh, cyber stuff that's been picked up today by experts. But just quickly, if they are going to legislate in this uh, term of parliament, you've got the issue with the teal seats. Many of them will be captured. There's 80,000 Australians impacted by this super change that will be picked up by the larger balances. But news today that Bridget Archer and Russell Broadbent, but Archer's where my focus is, she's also now saying she's prepared to negotiate and talk to the government on this bill and obviously prepared to cross the floor. Now, yet again, I'd say Bridget Archer's in the wrong party. How, how do you think these will play out? Well, it's a bit the girl who cried wolf with Bridget Archer, isn't it? I mean... She crosses on nearly everything. <laughs> Sorry, that's exaggerating. She crosses on so many bits of legislation. Her crossing loses its significance. At the same time, handily for Peter Dutton, she's playing in her constituent to her constituency in a seat which, frankly, is naturally Labor's. And it's the sort of seat where people would object to people uh, who, are on, uh, who have more than $3 million in their super fund not being taxed more. So even though she's an annoyance in the parliament for Peter Dutton, I think some of the tactics she employs uh, essentially help them hang on to that seat. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword there, Peter. Mm, well, I think they help her hang on to the seat. I don't think they're very good for the overarching uh, uh, Liberal brand or feeling inside the party room. Let's go to the ASD, the Australian Signals Directorate, which is our sort of cyber spy agency. It's uh, inside the defence portfolio. A lot of experts out today said this idea that they could, ASD, the government entity, take over businesses uh, in the circumstance of a, a, an attack, a cyber attack, or a hack like we saw with Medicare. They've all said, forget it, you know, dead on arrival. We think this is a stupid idea. Is the government going to pursue it? I don't know is the answer to that question, but even the review said you could do this. It didn't say you should do this from Mandy Penn and the like. So I think the fact James Patterson came out straight away and expressed concerns makes it less likely because on national security, it's often easier with that bipartisan support. Look, a lot of this to me really seems like the government being seen to do something. That, 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 they like to blame the last government on this stuff, but some of these problems you just can't solve. So it involves a round table. It involves appointing a new bureaucrat to be cyber coordinator. But will it make any difference practically when it comes to some of these hacks going forward? And I think there'll be continu continue to be headaches for the government, but at least they're able to show, I guess, that they're having a crack at it. I think we will see tightening up of some of the laws, uh, but I I'm not sure on this proposal. I, I Obviously, it's already coming up against resistance. And uh, mm. as, you, as you allude to, it's probably unlikely. I'll leave it there. Andrew Clennell, thank you.